When it comes to showcasing raw power, anime never disappoints. Every action-packed series features stunning, grand explosions that light up the sky, all thanks to heart-pounding clashes. In this video today, we're going to take a look at the top 20 best showcases of power of this decade. Kicking off our list with a fresh addition to the anime scene, we have Ragnar Crimson. Meet Ragnar, our hero, who starts off as a humble and not so powerful dragon hunter in a world crawling with, you guessed it, dragons. We get to see Ragnar unleashing his powers when a superior dragon who was supposed to kill Leo appears. And bro, that scene had no right to go that hard. There was no chit chat, no second chances, just pure unfiltered annihilation. This was the coldest scene in the first episode, quite literally, as Ragnar froze the dragon and shattered him into microscopic particles. This new power of Ragnar is such a game changer and be ready to witness more power-ups of Ragnar in this anime series. Kudakero. Let's travel into the magical world of magic revolution of reincarnated princess where Arnis brings innovation and energy into a kingdom where magic is everything. Reincarnated into a fantasy world with memories of her past life, Arnis has a serious upper hand in everything she does. Despite being born into a royal family with a long lineage of powerful magical users, Arnis herself can't use magic the traditional way. But does that stop her? Absolutely not. She becomes an innovator and invents magical tools that help her become powerful. Now, let's talk about that jaw-dropping moment when Arnis faces off against an insanely powerful dragon. This dragon isn't an ordinary one. He means business, but so does Arnis. You see, Arnis has trained herself to be a very skilled fighter who specializes in monster hunting. After releasing the limiter from her sword and getting that much-needed push from Yuffie, Arnis uses her glorious Excalibur attack and slays the dragon. Lesson learned. Never underestimate the power of a girl who looks like she couldn't hurt to fly. She might just surprise you by taking down a dragon. Have you ever seen someone with a fate worse than death? Well, take a look at the fight between Boss and Oaken in Ranking of Kings. Oaken is the unlucky one who experienced it in his fight against Boss. You see, Boss is easily one of the strongest characters in the series. His strength is just on another level that can't be measured. On the other hand, Oaken is an immortal being who once used to be an honorable knight. No matter how much you beat him up, he's gonna rise up again. But after beating Oaken to a pulp multiple times, Boss finally devised a way for Oaken to stop coming back to life. Imagine the sheer agony Oaken endures. He's been splattered into pieces, squished into a ball, and even stuck in a rock like some bizarre modern art piece unable to reform. The only thing that could give him a break from his constant torment is death. Guess what? That's impossible for him. Poor guy stuck in an endless loop of misery. King Boss's powers are really terrifying. <laughs> Moving on, we have Richter versus the Hunters in Castlevania Nocturne. He's not only charming, but an extremely capable vampire hunter possessing the whip that his father gave him as a family heirloom. In his clash against a bunch of vampires, Richter showed everyone who the real boss is by unleashing his dormant powers. They made Richter insanely overpowered, just like he should be. Bro used the fighting skills of Trevor and the magical skills of Cypher to absolutely annihilate all the vampires. And that headband scene? It gives me goosebumps. Everything from this scene was just Perfect. Grand Cross in blue fire, epic. Richter's scream of apoplectic rage, flawless. That cold, hateful gaze he hands to these vampires before giving them the ass whooping of a lifetime, that was the moment that legit had me jumping out of my seat.
teleporting to the neon lit world of cyberpunk edge runners where every episode is packed with heart pounding battles and jaw dropping moments we have adam smasher versus david this one battle in this anime series has left fans absolutely confused as well as baffled you see adam smasher a full body cyborg who's traded nearly all of his humanity for unmatched power and resilience shows up destroys almost the entire main cast and then just leaves the whole thing's over just like that and we're left with a giant question mark hovering over our heads why did he do it what was the point who knows it just happened and we're all left to pick up the pieces and try to make sense of the carnage but hey adam smasher literally smashed everything to pieces including our heroes and that just shows how ridiculously powerful he is it was oddly satisfying to see an antagonist absolutely wreck the protagonist for a change with no plot armor to save the day Next up we have an epic showcase of power from Mobile Suit Gundam, the witch from Mercury, Suleta versus Guel. This fight between Suleta and Guel is an example of how you shouldn't underestimate a girl or call her a country bumpkin. You see, Suleta's our adorable, clumsy, yet surprisingly fierce heroine who steps into the spotlight with the Gundam aerial. Despite being clumsy and tripping over her own feet, this girl has some serious piloting skills that make her a force to be reckoned with. On the other hand, we have Guel, who's the school's hotshot. He's got a superiority complex and needs to be humbled. In his very first battle against Suleta, Guel believed that he would be able to crush her easily, but the tables turned and Suleta completely destroyed his Gundam as well as his fragile ego. Suleta really delivered a serious reality check to Guel's inflated sense of self-importance. <laughs> Looking into a man who's basically immortal, we have Gabimaru versus Tensen in Hell's Paradise. Gabimaru seems determined to stick around no matter how hard you try to get rid of him. Known for his incredible strength and lightning fast reflexes, Gabimaru is one of the strongest characters in the series. I mean, if you can't die, then no one can defeat you. In his fight against Zhu Jin, Gabimaru blesses us with one of the most satisfying hand-to-hand -hand combats we've ever witnessed. But you see, Zhu Jin's deadly fighting style makes this battle all the more interesting. Also, Zhu Jin can regenerate which makes us think that this battle won't be over too soon. After an intense hand-to-hand -hand combat, Gabimaru decides to beat Jujin faster than he can regenerate. And guess what? It actually worked! Gabimaru was so pressed on making it back alive for his loving wife that he actually killed the Tensen. I guess having a loving wife really is the strongest power in anime. <laughs> Blasting his way into this list, we have Rudius from Mushoku Tensei, who's one of the most well-explored characters ever seen in an anime. We saw Rudius from being weak to going overpowered in literally no time at all. He's grown up to be a fine young man, minus all the weird things he's into. Rudius is a capable magic wielder now, who can take up a bunch of very dangerous monsters on his own. Take for instance his short-lived fight against the Red Dragon. Rudius engages the Red Dragon with an impressive display of magical prowess, demonstrating just how much he's grown as a mage. While the others decide to retreat, Rudius takes on the Red Dragon and absolutely annihilates him. The Red Dragon was bound to die the moment he decided to mess with Rudius, and Rudius made it abundantly clear to him that monsters like the Red Dragon are nothing more than mere insects to him. Of course, we can't leave out Domura Shigaraki, who went from a troubled kid to a full-blown menace in My Hero Academia. His awakening in My Hero Academia alone is an example of how powerful he is. Shigaraki started out as the villain with a touch too dangerous for his own good, and over time he became the ultimate thorn in the hero's sides. After everything that our heroes did to prevent Shigaraki from unleashing his full powers, Shigaraki finally woke up in the most jaw-dropping way possible. After merging with All For One, Shigaraki awakens and flattens the entire Entire hospital area with his deadly quirk, Decay. For all for one, this is the ultimate dream come true. Shigaraki is now exactly the kind of unstoppable force that all for one envisioned.
万に一つの達成となる第四魔剣奈落を渡るいとアンゲス・タビア And now we have Oliver Horn from Reign of the Seven Spellblades, who's far from your ordinary first year student. He's got that mysterious and suave vibe going on that makes him instantly stand out amongst the other students at Kimberly Magic Academy. One of the coolest things about Oliver is his mastery over Spellblades, an arcane art that combines swordsmanship with magic. And boy, does he know how to put on a show. We get to witness his glorious powers in his fight against his teacher, Grenville. During this fight, Oliver reveals his own Spellblade that he inherited. From his mother. After defeating Grenville, Oliver makes him go through the kind of torture he made Oliver's mother go through in the past. And if that wasn't enough, he pushed Grenville to the point that he had to beg him for mercy. Yeah, even someone like Grenville had to bow down before Oliver the Mighty. It's a satisfying and brutal payback that makes you cheer for Oliver even more. No. 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 Now it's time to showcase your power by smashing that like button and subscribing to VidiTube if you haven't done so already. I'd love to see that 80% of the audience who watch the content but haven't subscribed yet become a part of my community. So what are you waiting for? Like, subscribe, and let's enter the top 10. Do you have a favorite unconventional hero? Well, for me, it's none other than Mash Burn Dead from Mashal, Magic and Muscles, especially after his entrance exam. Mash is born in a world where magic is everything, but he couldn't care less about it because, well, he doesn't have any, does he? But that doesn't stop him from getting into Eastern Magic Academy. You see, this dude is more into building muscles rather than working on his non-existent magic. And that's exactly how he's going to be at the top. Because who needs magic when your muscles can punch that magic into oblivion? We see Mash shocking everybody with his strength in the entrance exam. Dude aces every single exam with his raw power, no magic involved. During the written test, even the words got scared of him and went into their original places. They say Mash has no magic, but I believe he has the magical ability to pull out cream puffs whenever he wants, as well as the ability to keep them safe during combat. <laughs> Next up we have Sung Jin Woo, the solo player from Solo Leveling who loves going solo as he fights the upper rank hunters. He starts off at the bottom of the barrel as an E-rank adventurer in the world of monster hunting. He's known as the world's weakest hunter and let's just say that his survival skills are often more about running away than actually fighting. But that doesn't stay like that for long as after slaying monsters again and again he becomes extremely overpowered. He goes from barely making it out alive to taking down colossal beasts single handedly all while looking cool. We get to see his glorious powers in his fight against the hunters whose evil schemes he fell prey to. Though he initially hesitated to use brutal methods, he had to put aside his moral compass and give those evil hunters a taste of their own medicine. He mercilessly killed all those hunters who left him to die inside the dungeon. His powers were extremely terrifying and we get to see a whole new side of Sung Jin Woo, a side that doesn't just survive but dominates. <laughs> Now let's talk about the incredibly dramatic Shadows I Am Atomic from Eminence in Shadow. This guy takes the phrase living in your own world to a whole new level. Shadow dreams of being a mastermind behind the scenes, pulling the strings from the shadows. Now let's talk about the iconic moment where he says I am atomic and everything goes boom. We get to witness this jaw dropping showcase of power in Sid's fight against Xenon. Now this attack triggers a massive nuclear reaction, leaving a deep crater in its wake. Shadow isn't just playing the part. He's redefining what it means to be an overpowered character. The attack is so powerful that it feels as if you're watching Oppenheimer. And the way Sid says, I am atomic, feels like it's touching your ears without consent. There was no reason for this to go so hard. エヌスドンノアは確かにこの手に
Meet Arnos Voldigod, the ultimate demon god who's the truest definition of being overpowered as we look into his fight against Avos in the Misfit of Demon King Academy Season 2. Arnos isn't your typical anime protagonist. He's the reincarnation of the Demon King of Tyranny and he's here to reclaim his throne after a 2,000 year nap. Things get spicy when Arvos, aka Misa, the false demon king, comes to kill Arnos. From the moment Arnos activated his purple eyes, we knew it was over. Our boy flashes a calm smile at the opponent and it's clear that he's about to utterly crush them. True to form with just the blink of his eye, the real demon king of tyranny takes down Arvos, who had been spouting ridiculous claims. Seriously, calling him just a demon king doesn't do him justice, he's more like a demon god. His power is so overwhelming that he's beyond the realm of normal demon hierarchy. In what world did Arvos think it was okay to challenge someone who beat the god of destruction in the first place? <laughs> Senju Maru's Bankai Gangai is a game changer when it comes to fighting off tough opponents. We get to witness her glorious Bankai against Yuha's elite personal guards. She single-handedly defeated all of them and took putting someone on a shirt to the next level. After breaking the Blood Oath seal, Senju Maru unleashes her epic Bankai, making the heavens and earth tremble. Liel Baro falls to her abundant blooming eyes, Askin meets his end with Armor Blade of Steel, and Perinda is defeated by her bowels of black sand. Gerard is taken down with freezing bed linens, Jugram is burned by the burning field and Uruyu is overpowered by the Star of the Dark Knight. This epic fight is a defining moment in Bleach history because believe it or not, this wasn't even in the manga. <laughs> What's a showcase of power list without Eren Jaeger and his grand entrance that shook the world, literally? The rumbling was a huge disaster where titans from Carl Fritz's time destroyed humanity. This looming threat had kept people on Paradise Island in check for ages, acting as a constant reminder of the power that lay beyond their walls. But when Eren Jaeger was born, he unleashed the border titans, starting the rumbling and causing the biggest catastrophe in 854 years. The best part about this rumbling? Eren's not just casually destroying stuff, he's on a mission to reshape the world according to his vision. All that built up rage and hatred in Eren since the first episode was finally released in this one scene. Watching Eren's transformation from a troubled youth to a world altering force is chilling. It does make me wonder if the walls were made to protect humanity from titans or if they were made to protect the rest of the world from Eren. Tenkai <laughs> Another one that we just couldn't miss is the absolute heartthrob from the world of Jujutsu Kaisen. And yes, I'm going to be talking about Gojo Satoru. He's the ultimate show off that you didn't know you needed. Apart from being handsome and just pure eye candy, Gojo is an extremely powerful sorcerer who makes the cursed spirits shake whenever he's around. His absolutely overpowered and mind blowing showcase of power was when he revealed to the world his domain expansion for the very first time. Now, for Gojo's opponents, his domain expansion is less of a challenge and more of a please make it stop moment. But who was the unfortunate victim of this deadly attack? Jogo, who else? Nobody ever seemed to talk about the fact that he pulled Jogo's head off clean. Not cut it, pulled it. Yeah, that's how unfortunate Jogo was in his fight against Gojo. Gojo always manages to show us all what he's actually made of. Have you ever witnessed two equally matched opponents fighting each other? Let's talk about Free Ren's fight with her replica, who was just like Free Ren in every way, in Free Ren Beyond Journey's End. Free Ren is an incredibly powerful mage with over a thousand years of experience and massive mana. Her strength is so great that even her own clone could challenge her. The fight was a stunning display of magic with bright, vibrant colors filling the screen. It was especially thrilling to see Fern land the final blow. Madhouse absolutely cooked with the visual and sound effects in this fight and it truly Truly felt like two gods clashing. This matchup is so amazing because you get to see so much of Free Ren's offensive magic she actually has, and it shows how scary it is to face her. It's basically a reminder of why facing her in battle would be a nightmare for anyone. <laughs> Ooh. 
Next, we have the fight that broke the internet into pieces. Absolutely destroyed. That's right. I'm talking about Gyomei's epic display of power against Muzan, the ultimate villain, who'd been a thorn in our hero's side for a long time now in Demon Slayer. Finally cornered, Muzan was doing his best to free himself, but Gyomei had to experiment with him a little before letting him go. Bro literally forgot for a moment that he was blind. The way he parried Muzan's attack and continued to smash his head was nothing short of epic. Had it not been for Muzan's dirty trick, Gyomei could have easily destroyed him in no time of course with the help of a little bit of sunlight. Anyway, Gyomei is an absolute powerhouse in the world of Demon Slayer that needs more recognition. <laughs> And finally, we have many options from One Piece, but for today we have Shanks, the cool and calm captain of the Red Hair Pirates and a force to be reckoned with in One Piece. So Kid had been causing chaos everywhere, hoping to draw Shanks into the fray. When Shanks finally made his grand entrance, he didn't just put Kid in his place, he wiped out Kid and his entire crew in one fell swoop. Seriously, Kid didn't even get a chance to showcase his full potential. Shanks ended their career with his mighty divine departure, a move so powerful it's the same one Roger used against Odin. This was such a satisfying moment because Kid finally paid the price for being cocky. This is exactly the reason why even admirals are scared of Shanks. You see, in the world of One Piece, the one who acknowledges his enemy to be a threat always wins, and the one who underestimates always loses. And if you enjoyed this video, check out this video on the most legendary power awakenings in anime. That's all for today. I'll see you around soon. Vinitube signing off. Hora, hora.